we have some news to do so let's get started what is going on everybody thank you all so much for tuning into this live stream segment of mikasa sukasa and of course as always i am your humble humble host nico house um y'all know that uh i don't know if y'all knew to the shadow but i don't know if y'all are aware that i am oftentimes called a conspiracy theorist did y'all know that little old me i am called whenever i say things like big pharma runs medicine you know things that i thought we all agreed on but apparently it's not true anymore uh when i say things like hey maybe we shouldn't be really excited about a vaccine that they're about to create in three or four months when they haven't been able to figure it out in 30 or 40 years right and I, they were like nah they wouldn't do anything like that that's merely conspiracy theory you're talking about nico that's what i was told i even said well uh really quick what about this whole ass statement from dr fauci saying we want to have a vaccine by the fall and then he said they were like he didn't really mean the fall he meant another fall <laughs> that's what we're told I, i'm a conspiracy theorist because i like to take words that people said and then say them to you and say those words were probably wrong we shouldn't follow that advice and then i'm wrong for saying that now some of you may be wondering why i'm bringing this up because my quote unquote conspiracy theories keep coming true i want to show y'all something can you bring up that tweet really quick Bloomberg reported five hours ago, this is breaking news, that the United States has entered a pact with Pfizer for 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines, which Americans will receive for free. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not the, I'm not the smartest guy, okay? I will admit, but I'm pretty sure that that's, that means Pfizer's going to get paid something. Because they, they left, they put the part where U.S. made a pact with Pfizer, there's going to be a bunch of vaccines, and it's going to be free. That seems like everything you need to know. Uh, hold on, what do you mean a pact? The U.S. don't make pacts with people. We get money or we spend money. And let's look exactly, let's look at exactly how much we spent. Why would Pfizer be so altruistic about just giving us a vaccine for free? Oh, it's because <laughs> in signing a $2 billion deal supply, their experimental coronavirus vaccine to the U.S., Pfizer Incorporated and Biotech SE are setting a price ceiling of less than $20 a dose. Wow. And that will impact how other companies charge to protect people from COVID-19. Don't you love to spin on that one? Only $20 a dose, people. But a lot of y'all will get it for free. Listen, people. Government. Listen to me real quick. Government. When we said reallocate our tax money and put it towards health care, this isn't what we meant. We didn't mean pay off Pfizer pay them a billion dollars to make a half-ass COVID vaccine and then ignore every other solution out there. Like, what the fuck? Bro. 
Oh, man. Man, 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 man. Listen, y'all. Now, I know some of y'all might be thinking. Y'all might be thinking that I might be being a little bit too... I might be being a little bit too jumpy here. I might be jumping to conclusions. I don't know how much influence Big Pharma actually had over the rights to produce and administer this vaccine. I don't know if Pfizer specifically had lobbied so much that the government would want to work with them and maybe one other company to get this stuff done. We don't know if Pfizer might have had some undue financial influence on the United States government somehow by maybe spending money on them. I don't know. And maybe that influence would have stopped them from talking about the other solutions that were available, like hydroxychloroquine and zinc and interferon alpha 2B. We don't know, except for, here's the thing. Um, I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to pull this up real quick. Let's look up how much money. Oh, actually, I'm going to pull it up over here. Let's look up how much money they spent. Lobbying. Biopharma, biopharmadive.com. Cry, you can find things like that. It's crazy how hard research is nowadays. Pfizer, Amgen, and Lilly spent the most to lobby Congress. Well, maybe this was like 10 years ago. Oh, oh no. This was published on March 4th, 2020. That's a really convenient time period. I don't know why it seems so familiar to me. Collectively, drug makers and other health sector companies outside of insurance spent $4.7 billion on lobbying Congress and federal agencies and another $1.3 billion on state and national campaign contributions during that time. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Pfizer, Amgen, and Eli Lilly were the biggest corporate spenders with Pfizer alone accounting for $219 million in lobbying expenses and 23 million campaign contributions with pharma, P-H-R-M-A, the drug lobby ranked, ranking the highest with $422 million spent. So here's what's significant about this. This isn't just a year. So I don't want you all to think that. This is from 1999 to 2018. So in other words, Pfizer has been one of the top lobbying influences in all of the US government since 1999. While y'all were in the club partying for Y2K, Pfizer was making it rain on Capitol Hill. So whenever a lot of us exercise skepticism about the narrative siege that we have been going on, because yeah, I've been, once again, we've covered this, I've been seeing the obsession over the masks, I see some people are obsessing over whether or not we should be wearing masks, I see people obsessing over, you know, we can't wear masks because our heads are going to spontaneously combust, I've seen all the sides, I've been one of the maybe two people who have said, well, you know, maybe we won't need masks if we use interferon, because Cuba said it works pretty well, because they beat COVID effectively. Uh, these other countries are also using interferon. So, okay, well, what about hydroxychloroquine and zinc, which has been extremely effective? Nah, no, we can't use any of those. Well, why not? Because wearing a mask will actually solve all of our problems. You didn't know? Well, well, shouldn't we address the fact that the same people who are trying to shift accountability by putting the, the onus on us to wear a mask are not even holding themselves accountable for, I don't know, maybe actually solving the damn problem 
with the medicine that's available. Maybe even giving out aid in such a way that we feel comfortable quarantining, missing work, losing our jobs, keeping our kids out of school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe the onus shouldn't be on us to do their jobs. They're like, hey, we know we've been in abysmal failure as a government, but if you don't wear that mask, you wanna see people die. Or once again, the opposite side of the fence, because you got, you got the MAGAs that don't wanna, you know, they, they can't blame Trump for anything. Oh, well, you just shouldn't be wearing a mask at all. Oh my God. I never thought that I would ever see masks trend on Twitter so much. Not gonna lie to you. And yet, once again, we were one of the few, the few, very, very few channels who were like, uh, hey, so why y'all arguing about that stuff over there? Y'all sure y'all wanna look at, y'all don't wanna look at all this money that Big Pharma is spending? Y'all sure y'all don't wanna look at all this money that Bill Gates is spending? Y'all sure y'all not wanna look at all, you don't wanna look at all that money that Big Pharma and Bill Gates is spending specifically on the WHO who is giving us all this information? And why the WHO is refusing to use all of that money and spending to run studies like more than two, because that's basically what they've done, on interferon and hydroxychloroquine and zinc. And y'all not worried that Big Pharma, the same ones that told us like weed was bad for us and it's going to make your brain look like eggs and it's going to make you fail out of school and you get cancer from weed. Remember that that was what they were saying before? That same Big Pharma that still... <sighs> oh, God. Fauci was like, wasn't Fauci like in five administrations? So he's been part of that narrative. Okay, just make it so. Uh, I don't know if y'all know this, but I don't really trust Big Pharma all that much. And the money that they spent, think about it like this, people. I just told you that Pfizer spent has spent over $200 million in lobbying since 1999. They are the second largest spender. By the way, this is separate from any of the insurance spending, like for to protect the private insurance companies. This is just big pharma money. So they spent over two hundred million. The second largest, and they just got a two billion dollar return with one fell swoop. Think about that. You think they, they, that they got their money's worth with that little bit over $200 million that they spent? And do you think they were not exercising the influence that they bought with that $200 million throughout this entire process? I'm just trying to figure this because I listen, I'm not a doctor. Once again, just somebody who plays a doctor with my last name on TV, but I'm not a doctor personally. But I do know you can't have two masters, people. You can't have two masters. Even if you got a part time job, you can only have one full time job. And it's whoever's paying you the most. So there you have it. Congratulations, you're gonna get a free vaccine that they came up with in the last two months. How many of y'all gonna take it? I'm not taking it, I'm not. <laughs> no, hell no, not at all. Not even a little bit. Not even thinking about it. I told y'all. I will take it when Bill Gates tells his kids to take it. It's, you can't tell me Big Pharma is largely responsible for the opioid crisis. You can't tell me then Big Pharma is also responsible 
for partially for the drug war that is the war against marijuana. That is still federally illegal. Federally illegal still. If you're in, a, depending on what state you're in, the feds could still run up in your house. This is a fact. If they chose to. That's big pharma. Big Pharma is the reason why hemp was illegal for a long time. And no one can explain to me that nonsense. Hemp can't even get you high. It can make your hair smell really good, though, and be all soft. It can, you know, you get some good, this, you know, hemp is really good uh, clothing material, too. I don't know if y'all knew that. It is good. Hemp, hemp is really good for you. But hemp was illegal. Big Pharma is the reason that until recently, CBD was illegal everywhere. Big Pharma is the reason that they're now trying to come down on Kratom, which is essentially the natural version of Adderall. Helps with energy, focus, depression, anxiety, etc. It's a plant. Kratom is a damn plant. Big Pharma, you're going to tell me that they are responsible for really some of the most popular medical travesties of the last half century. And they're responsible for influencing the government in a way that was not, you know, to the benefit of the people. And now all of a sudden, because a pandemic, which basically makes the American people right for the picking, because of the pandemic, we're just supposed to pretend like their influence just disappeared. Come on, bro. It's not how it works, man. It's not how it works. It's sad, but it's true. It's sad, but it's true. So no, once everything opens back up, I will be flying to Cuba and I will be taking interferon. Or I will, might go to my doctor and just tell him I have arthritis and so I can get some hydroxychloroquine and zinc. I don't know, but I'm not taking, I'm gonna keep taking my vitamin C though. My, my vitamin C gummies. They've been working out pretty well for me. But I ain't taking nothing that was made in two months. Good luck trying to figure out the side effect, the long-term side effects for something that they have, have, they've had zero time to figure out the long-term side effects of. Long-term is not two weeks, people. Long-term is not two months. When you're injecting something into your bloodstream that is trying to fundamentally change the way you deal with the virus, long-term could mean one year two years, three years. But the moral of the story is you don't know because you can't possibly know unless you have borrowed Ant-Man's time machine and traveled into the damn future that doesn't exist yet to figure out what the long-term effects are going to be. Y'all should look up the lawsuit against Bill Clinton whenever he forced all those military personnel uh, to take experimental vaccines before they deployed. Uh, I think it was during Desert Storm. You should go look that up. If you like that segment of Mikasa Sukasa, don't forget to like the video and smash that subscribe button. Want access to members only live streams, behind the scenes footage, and other premium content? Well, you can endorse us on Rockman Premium, become a patron through Patreon, or you can sign up for the MCSC Premium membership through YouTube. All the links are in the description below. But hey, more than anything else, more than anything else, more than anything else, more than anything else, always remember, find your balance, 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 find your balance. Always remember, more than anything else, find your balance. Peace.